Hello, welcome to another episode of the Taiji Noble Podcast. I'm Graham Barlow, your host, and this is a podcast where we get to talk about all things to do with internal art, Tai Chi, and pretty much anything I want. So, my guest today is Michael Ash, an old friend of mine. He's a training partner in the martial arts Shingi, and he's recently got into Tai Chi under my Tai Chi brothers and teacher. So that's interesting. Uh, we'll talk about that. And we get into everything to do with Mike's other training background. He's, he's training loads of different martial arts, Muay Thai, a bit of Judo, Trolley Fert, various things. So here he is. Mike Ash, how are you, sir? Very good. Very good. Thank you, Graham. It's been, uh, it's been a while, isn't it, since, uh, since we've spoken? But um, yeah, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, it, it has been a while. The last time we got together was, was it one of Damon's Fox Fist courses? Oof, yeah, and it must have been, gosh, I think, was it uh, post-COVID? The memory, the memory these days isn't what it was now I'm no. in the 50s, but uh, I think it was soon after the COVID. Yeah, we did some sort of martial arts thing, which always ends up being shingy in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Starts out being some other martial art, but we end up crowbarring it back in. Yeah, I, I seem to remember you. You were doing a, a jiu-jitsu seminar for us, showing some ground fighting techniques, which uh, which was very interesting at the time. And I seem to remember you were showing a way of getting up off the ground whilst defending yourself. Yeah, um, using a certain way of getting up, basically, without exposing yourself from somebody kicking you. Yeah, the, it's called the technical stand-up. That was the one. That was the one. Yeah. The <laughs> so yeah, been practicing it. All the time since, so um, so obviously, very useful. Every time you get up now, obviously. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. And it's very useful in daily life. <laughs> you will all the time, all the time. In fact, uh, as you say, rise and shine every morning, and uh, practicing the the, the, the actual uh, fighting stance. So I'm straight into it. Yeah, <laughs> straight out of bed in the morning. <laughs> and Mrs. Loves it. Yeah, true. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we met way back in the early 2000s, didn't we? Yeah, I somehow think it was about 2005, maybe, something along those lines. Yeah, about then. So me and Damon were doing a Shingi class just outside Bristol in a kind of field, basically. Yeah. And then he, he told you just to turn up, and I, I had no idea who you were, and you just turned up, and I went, oh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the look of surprise on your face, this random big ginger guy just standing there looking at you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it was it was a bit sketchy, the sort of um, the introductions that Damon didn't give us, but no, you're right, I turned up on the day down there after having spent a year training with Damon up in Huddersfield, so it, it was a change of location for me to to come down to the ah. Bath area and meet up, with, meet up with you guys. So you'd um, been, I, I always thought you'd started in Birmingham with Damon when he was working there, but you'd actually gone up to Huddersfield to, to train with the Northern Light, had you? Yeah, so I suppose just sort of going into how I got into Jing Yi. So back in the sort of late 90s, I did a bit of kickboxing up in Sheffield, where I used to live up in Sheffield, and inadvertently um, injured my back quite badly. I popped a couple of discs whilst doing the old school sit-ups that, 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 that used to be prevalent in a lot of martial arts classes. Mm. Um, and you know what I mean? Going all the way up to, to your knees and all the way down again. And, yeah. and being, being a guy who's sort of just under six foot four with a long back, it didn't suit me. And I ended up crippling myself nearly for, for quite some time. So I, um, I ended up doing a bit of Tai Chi, Chen style for a couple of years in the early 2000s to try and remedy my back while still hopefully trying to find something of martial value within the Tai Chi world. And realistically, it was it was more it was more about repairing myself really in terms of the, the, the Tai Chi that was taught. And it, it was good for that, the stretching, etc. But it was closer to yoga there really in a lot of ways than it was to martial arts mm. as far as I, I could tell. And it wasn't anywhere near fighty enough for me. Eventually, I, I, I realized that there's other stuff out there, and I came across Jing Yi online and, and researched it a bit, and then met a guy called Chris Collins in Birmingham, who weirdly was doing Jing Yi with Damon up in, in Huddersfield, and he uh, he took me up to Huddersfield to meet Damon, and the rest is history, as they say. So, yeah, yeah, I met Damon on a, a disused railway platform in Huddersfield in the dead of night whilst it was lashing it down with, with his other weirdos standing around. I quickly realised this isn't yoga after he hit me, and yeah. um, <laughs> this is mighty stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was 2004. I remember that, that first meeting with Damon feeling as well, because he, he just kind of looks at you and goes, right, 
do it do whatever you want <laughs> so you, you try and do something and then you, you just, it just hits you and you think it's not going to work is it <laughs> Damon, he's fairly unimposing when you first meet him. Lovely guy, you know, he's, he, um, and, and seems very sort of um, up for chatting and, and, and you know, and, and war- a warm person to start training with. But then, and then he gives you a tap and you realise it feels like being hit like a baseball bat, basically. And yeah. uh, you realise that there's some significant power going on there, which, uh, yeah, which is impressive. And what a what a better ad- advertisement there is to, to get you into a, a martial art when, um, you know, he displays minimal effort and maximum bang when he hits you. And yeah. uh, sure enough, that's what I wanted to learn. Yeah, well, I had the same experience. He just does such a minimal movement, you don't think it's going to have any impact on you. And then it has a disproportionate effect to how much you think it should. And that's that kind of psychologically, it kind of disarms you and then you get hit really hard and then you think, oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. I mean, you see him do it to other people and you think, that can't have hurt. He barely touched you. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. then you know it happens to you personally, and you think, "My word!" It uh, he he shocks you to your core when 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 he strikes you. And, and was that it? Then was it was it shingy all the way at that point? Well, then that was it. I was sold. Um, and and ultimately, what with my previous injuries and the fact that this was now a martial art that I I realised was extremely fighty without all the sort of the jumping around and the, the sort of circuit training aspects of kickboxing and the high kicking, et cetera, mm. which meant fundamentally I could look after my back while still training in something that's going to um, give me the uh, the skills that I, I wanted to preserve, well, increase upon basically. So, so yeah, Jing Yi was definitely the one, a real eye opener. And that was, as I say, 2004. So nearly 20 years later, I, I still, I still love it as a martial art and, it's it's taught me many a thing, not just the fighty side of life as well. There's there's plenty of other things that come out of uh, of training something like Jing Yi. So, what are the the aspects of the art that um, appeal to you the most? Would you say? I think ultimately the, what the court, the Chinese call the Shen Fa, which is obviously the the body. I think loosely translated as uh, body method, which is. Ultimately, the, the various vectors and, and twists and turns, the way, the way your body's trained to move within Jing Yi, covers such a vast number of different bases, for want of a better word, that it, it's, it's given me the ability to pick up other martial arts along the way by just using Jing, the Jing Yi platform, if you, want to, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm. And it's that depth of, of, of a martial art. It, 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 it's, a compo- it's a composition of micro martial arts, as, as I, know, I know you know, in terms of the various animals. And each one of those animals teaches you to move in, in a different kind of way. Mm. So you can compare each one of those animals to a, to, a ver- for a, to a different martial art. So it's that depth and breadth of, of movement that I just, I just love in Jing Yi. And, and that then has led on to the more should we say that the spiritual stroke shamanic side of Jing Yi in terms of using those movements to take things to a other, another new level in terms of, you know, understanding myself and, and the natural world. Yeah. There's a few things to go over there. So just go, go let's take a step back to the animals, which particular animal methods of Jing Yi are you most attracted to? So it, it's weird. It's weird. And this is the thing about Jing Yi you end up being akin to an animal that isn't necessarily the one that you feel attracted to. It's more about that animal comes along and finds you and you end up becoming that because for some reason or other, it just mirrors your own personality. So, you know, I, I always liked the sort of the bear eagle chicken type sort of movements in Jing Yi. They're much more obvious and strikey and, Mm. And you see them a lot on the internet. They're very popular sort of animals. But ultimately, the, the animal that sort of matches my my type of persona is, is horse. Yeah. And I never thought I was any good at it until Damon said one day, you are horse. <laughs> <laughs> the way you move, the way you think, your your actual strategy in life um, is, is very, you know, when I say strategy in life, I mean in terms of, say, so a horse's mentality, for example, is when a horse is threatened, their strategy is basically to go around in circles, find where the weakest point is. If, if it's fenced in, for example, it will find the weakest point where that fence is and it will smash through it and it will run. 
and that's very similar to my kind of personality being being ginger haired with a bit of a temper and um <laughs> <laughs> and a penchant for motorbikes as well. And a penchant for motorbikes. It's more about running away. As as yeah, like. yeah, exactly. So, so I like to find the weakest point, smash through it, and move on. And obviously, the, the actual movements of of horse punch, and it is very punchy horse. But mm. the, the actual rolling movements of, of the horse punches are, it just suits my 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 frame, I suppose, as well. Yeah, and having long arms helps, I think. For it, indeed, it, it yeah, it does. It does help. There's no two ways about it. I'm I'm very rangy, so I'm lucky that way. So yeah. I'm definitely not somebody who should adopt sort of uh, the monkey or chicken type animals, which are dare I say it more for the sort of close range, smaller guys to, to get in mm. to get in with. Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a short guy, obviously, as you know, but I I really like monkey. I really like it. But I'm, oh, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I just love the the movement, really. There's difficult, lot, though. Very difficult animal. It, it's a trick. It's a tricky animal. Yeah, there's lots of complicated stepping, isn't there? Mm, um, yeah. But equally, I, I'm really attracted to bear. So, which is a kind of a polar opposite to monkey because it's very straightforward and you just sort of plod forward and you plod back. You know, there's there's not much yeah. more to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and, and defense. Well, defensively and you know, defense is attack in, in Jingy, obviously, and attack is defense, but yeah it's it's very straightforward to use as you rightly say and if you if you're a bit sort of more muscly it's um it's it's and, and a bit chunky it's a very very yeah. solid you solid need, animal yeah, to you use. need to have a bit of um chunk behind you don't you too? yeah yeah exactly like exactly thin people aren't particularly bear shaped <laughs> no not unless they're emaciated polar bears who are running out of food up in the polar polar yeah. waste somewhere but um no so so every animal does fit a certain body type and that's the great thing about jing yi it's not a martial art that's been invented by a guy who's based it on his own personal physical attributes and then tries to you have to try and fit those physical attributes into your own personal attributes when you're learning that martial art if you know what i mean so certain styles of karate for example they've, they've each been designed about one guy's physical size and, and, and the way he uses his body so That's it might a good point yeah it That's doesn't suit point. everybody with shingi there's there's at least 12 different animals so that's yeah within those 12 they should be able to suit everybody I well, that's right. And, and, and do you know what? If you can't find one of those 12 that suits, you can blend them to create something else that does suit you as well. It has that ability. S swallow a crocodile. Um, <laughs> you, know, you, you, you could find something in the middle of all these animals as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it has that. Anyway, it has a whole range of depth to it that I'm never going to fathom in my lifetime. And I don't think anybody in the history of Jing Yi ever has, even the great masters, because it, it, it's just a never ending subject. And, and that's the other thing to love it. It's, uh, it's not something you get a black belt at. And, no. you know, you might know the, you know, the, the core parts of the syllabus. It's, it's basically, it's forever, isn't it? It's an forever, ever martial art. And you, funnily enough, you, you get better at it as you get older rather than rather than worse because you're getting old yeah so there's another thing to like i suppose yeah you're right i mean there's a there's a shelf life for a lot of martial arts basically because your body gives yeah. up whereas yeah. chingy you very rarely put your body in a what should we say like a difficult to get to position they're, they're quite yeah. natural movements aren't they they are well exactly so they're based on they're based on animal movement so they are natural and, and if you overcook the pudding in terms of your body movements and you hurt yourself you're not doing it right yeah you're probably doing it too athletically rather than trying to use the right chen fan as you said before so i hear you've been training in some other martial arts like muay thai recently so so yeah pre-pandemic i thought i'd give muay thai a go and end up doing for about a year, just really as a re as a as a way of sparring and doing some scrapping with other people and just mm. getting a flavour of what what Muay Thai is about. And ultimately, the, the one thing I really wanted to to get under my belt was was how to properly do a roundhouse Muay Thai kick, which is <laughs> one of its signature moves. Yeah, yeah, it is. And can you do it now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got myself a, a nice big punch bag in the garden made out of three tires. So for the first few weeks, I literally decimated my shins to the point where I could barely walk. But Ooh. now, um, <laughs> now they're sufficiently hardened. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I can, I can, uh, I can do a, a, a half decent. 
roundhouse well, that, kick. The roundhouse kick is no joke, though, isn't it? It's, you know, one of those and you kind of collapse, don't you? Well, I had a couple to the head when I was training. Ooh. Which I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, absolutely lethal is what they are. So, um, but, you know, I am getting older, so I, my abilities of doing it are, are, are probably, you know, not that bad for my age. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a very useful weapon to have. It's also good as a sweeping kick as well, mm. never mind onto the head. I mean, you know, if you can kick that hard um, behind someone's calves and take their legs away. Yeah. Extremely useful. It's, it's a bit like a leg version of trolley foot sow choy, isn't it? That's an interesting way of putting it, actually, because the the winding up of doing it, and I, I maybe it's the way I do a roundhouse kick, I mm. do it in a very similar way to, to, the, to the winding motion of, of, of a sow in, in, mm. in trolley foot. If you know what I mean, mm. the shoulder that's not striking goes back extremely hard, which drives the other side of the body round. If you follow, yeah. But yeah, no, that's an interesting parallel. And obviously, Choi Lee Foot historically has done quite well against Thai boxing in in competition as well, hasn't it? It was about the only Chinese martial art that stood up for them. And uh, to be honest, I still I still don't think it did that well. <laughs> I think it did it did better than everything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know the uh, the statistics in terms of how many fights were lo- won or lost, but um, yeah, I think it, it it stood its own ground, didn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. In terms of that sporting arena, so um, yeah, Choi Lee Foot, another great martial art. Oh, yeah, that's, that is a great martial art. Um, mm. Yeah, so uh, another one, another one I've been involved with, and uh, I know you have as well. And, yeah, uh, and it's quite fun as well, isn't it, Charlie? Fight. It's it's quite a fun martial art. Oh, it's 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 fantastic fun, and 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 it's not as prescriptive as say you're doing something like Tai Chi, where you know you have to move your hand millimeter this way or that way. <laughs> Charlie Foot, once you once you once you get it, it uh, you, you can just blast it, can't you? It's 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 fantastic fun to to, to practice. Yeah, yeah. I always remember Ray saying to me. So I said, "Well, does it? Where does your foot end up when you when you finish this?" He said, "Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> what matters is that you've hit them." <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And that, that's exactly. the attitude of Troy Foot, which I quite it like. It is, and it doesn't matter if it's an open hand slap or a fist or whatever. Just hit them. Yeah. And to me, that's that, that's that's it's a, it's a level of freedom compared to the the prescriptiveness of some of the more technical arts that we do. It really is just crack on and just do what you can do against somebody. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fantastic. And I think sometimes you need those things don't you if you're doing something that's very precise yeah yeah you can get too sort of lost inside yourself i think you, you can and then you don't appreciate yeah you 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 lose you sometimes you lose the fun you can't see the wood for the trees whereas exactly. occasionally it's good just to step back and look at the whole forest you know which is more like trolley foot yeah trolley foot is definitely i can see the whole forest there's all the woods <laughs> I'm just going to blast into it. You know? right, I'm going to chop a few trees down now. Yeah. Yeah, no. It's, Whereas uh, you, want, you want the precision of cutting off individual branches. You need something like Tai Chi, right? Yeah, yeah. It's always good to dabble or at least try out, maybe even get good at other martial arts as well. Hmm. Because you can go down a bit of a wormhole if you stay within the confines of just doing one thing and you think it's going to take care of business all the time in, in, in every aspect. You know, Jing Yi, obviously, massive, huge subject and does cover pretty much anything you'd, you'd need to know in, in the martial arts world. But ultimately, I think you don't realise what's within the depths of Jing Yi until you do another martial art. And say, you, for example, you get thrown in judo or... I don't know, hit with a roundhouse kick in Thai boxing, the, the defensive or the defence attack aspects of Jing Yi are within the system, but you don't realise what they are until you, you come across a different type of martial art and you think, ah, I need to utilise X, Y or Z movement out of whatever animal, and that would negate the, uh, the, the strike happening against me in, in a different type of martial art. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? It's, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it just casts a light back on what you're doing within the, the realms of whatever martial art you you're, you prefer. So you know, I, you know, as I said, I've doubled in judo, choi li foot, silat, kempo, tai chi, kickboxing, Thai boxing, quite a few different different arts, and and, and and sparring with a lot of different people, and it really does make your preferred martial art come alive. I think 
and, and you start to understand the aspects of the martial art that you wouldn't normally at all realise until you try other stuff. Mm. Um, and it is like holding a mirror up against what it is you, you're trying to achieve. So I think it's always good, always good to look outside the box and try something different and, and to see what, you know, what other people are doing. And ultimately, if you, you know, if you're on the streets and you end up fighting somebody who's from a, you know, who's done something a bit odd, like I don't know, or, or not, or really extremely normal, like karate, you, you know what you're coming up against if you've experienced a bit of karate, for example. Not that that's necessarily um, the high end of things to worry about. No, you're, you're right though. It's um, it's a bit like what Damon always says about knife fighting. You can't learn knife defence. You have to learn how to fight with a knife before exactly. it's worth learning how to defend. Because exactly. You, the I mean, best way yeah, of defending you, is to know what the attacks are. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you want to stab somebody, you need to know what, what's in the mindset of that person with the, the knife. How am I going to attack you with the knife? What What do I think is that you know? And that's exactly right. And even though I think knife defence stuff is is a bit sketchy at times, I think a, a clean mm. pair of heels and some decent trainers and and, and, and running is is your best defence. When you can't run. Obviously, that you have to do something, but I think a lot of the, um, the stuff you see on the internet is, is woefully short of realistic because it comes from that defensive mindset rather than thinking about how the attacker would use a knife against you. Yeah, precisely. Just switch subjects a minute. You mentioned these spiritual benefits of Shingi and maybe a bit of shamanism. How would you connect all that together with martial arts? Well, I mean, do you know what? It's not something I ever thought that I'd ever go down that particular road in, in, in doing martial arts over the last 20 odd years. But I think me personally, I always felt there was something missing. There's always, there's always something, I don't know, esoteric for want of a better word, but something mysterious about just the feeling of energy whilst doing, you know, starting off doing kickboxing and doing other martial arts. And then even doing Tai Chi Chuan, you know, the, 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 you feel energy in Tai Chi Chuan and you feel the stuff going on. But, you know, everything you read about the, the, the traditional Chinese internal martial arts, especially, alludes to a very, and I, and I know Damon likes this term, a smoky type of atmosphere about these things that you can't quite put your, your finger on when you're actually doing them. But as I've, as I've progressed over the last, you know, 20 odd years, the experiences that I've had in terms of familiarising myself with these these feelings of, of tapping into energy, understanding energy a bit more, and and the fact that ultimately I've been led in this by doing Jing Yi via Damon as well. And and as, as we both know, Damon is is first and foremost into shamanism more than he's into martial arts, and I think he's equally adept at, at both. But leading me down this road, doing Jing Yi has, has opened my eyes or opened everything to, 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 to feeling and, and having experiences that are profoundly different from anything else that I was expecting to have in, in martial arts. And, and these things are very difficult to put into words as well. Mm. But there are benefits to, to be had out of them. And these benefits, again, words don't really do it, but I will say the benefits I've felt over the last, you know, especially the last few years where I think I've understood... Um, levels of shamanism a bit more I've come to understand myself more in terms of who I really am and 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 it's been quite striking how the, the, that that's happened mm. uh, and and I don't think you you can find that out easily through many other things in life again words don't convey that the, the, the how deep I feel about this but I feel for very fortunate and blessed to have met the teachers I've met who both Damon Ray who you know obviously and, and also Donald who have all led me down a more esoteric path in the martial arts world. Yeah you've been doing a bit more stuff with Donald recently haven't you and so for the listeners so Sufi Raymond Rand is my Tai Chi teacher and he's also Donald's Tai Chi teacher Donald yeah. Kerr and you've been doing some of the internal work with him as well as the Tai Chi, is that right? So yeah, so I mean, you know, I, I've picked up Tai Chi again in the last couple of years, so uh, do, doing doing the Yang style with, with, with both Donald and Ray intermittently. And, and I, I wanted to really hone in on, because these guys, as you know, 
Graham, they can fight with Tai Chi, which is a extremely <laughs> yeah. rare thing in it's this world. It's extremely rare, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And because... when we say they can fight, I mean, my God, they are they are dangerous. They are dangerous with their Tai Chi Chuan. And I've never come across any anyone like it in, in my experience who in the Tai Chi world who can do what they do. But yeah, yeah. Fundamentally... Well, just to a point on that, it, and it's not like they're doing kickboxing and also doing a Tai Chi oh, form, is it? Gosh. No, no, no they're, they're, they're doing weird stuff that, like, you go and hit them and they're, they're just not there and then they're hitting you and, you know, it's, it's different. Yeah, or, or, or they shake ones. your bones and then put your teeth in. Yeah. Um, or, or, or one minute you're standing there, you've been hit, the next minute you're flying through the air. And no, it's most definitely not kickboxing they are doing. It, it's, it's everything comes out of the form and you can see it, can't you? Um mm. Rather than, you know, a lot of people say they do Tai Chi and, and, and when they do fight, they might be good at fighting, but they look like they're doing kickboxing. Yeah, these guys don't look like that at all. Um, it's, it's, it's very interesting. And um, so, yeah, as, as, as part of, of, of learning uh, with Donald and Ray is the whole esoteric side of the art. And Yang style is more esoteric in nature, I think, than any of the other families uh, of Tai Chi controversial maybe yeah, um, interesting point I hadn't thought about that before but I think it, it, it's everything I've read about it leans that way uh, I think mm. um, and so, so the, the whole um, Qigong um, I've been training and when I say Qigong Qigong's a, a huge subject but the the levels of Qigong that I'm doing now it's far more in depth than, than anything I, I, I've done previously so just, just the length of time I, I'm doing Zhang Zhong, you know, standing and sort of the Peng um, uh, uh, standing stance, uh, you know, uh, and then doing sort of things like San Ti as well, the Jing Yi standing as well. I'll do 20 minutes to half an hour every morning now. And I never used to do this. I used to do <laughs> five, 10 minutes every day because it's mainly a San Ti because that's what you're doing Jing Yi. Yeah. But the, the focus wasn't always, wasn't necessarily there to do long periods of standing but no I've, I've really been working on it a lot and and, and working on the uh, the small heavenly circle you know yeah um, now that, that's something i wanted to talk to you about because um i've been doing that for well when did I, 20 years something like that um yeah it's that's one of the most valuable practices i i've discovered in in martial arts and well it's not really a martial art thing is it it's more of a internal work thing I, I don't know a qigong thing as yeah now you hear this talked about all the time by people especially on the internet you know small heavenly circle oh yeah we do that you know we do that of course we do <laughs> yeah after, after after you've practiced for a few years it just starts happening you can feel this energy <laughs> circling. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly and i'm just thinking no you've got no idea have you just no you've got no idea no. at all it's hard work to to make it happen you kind of have it to, is have to, it, bur- it, it, you have to burn the pathway in don't you yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was a bit dubious actually about it, Graham. To be honest with you, when I first started, you know, being yeah, taught, that, and that's fair because it it is a very dubious thing when you hear about it, isn't it? It is, and and you expect to, you know, after say I don't know, week two of doing it religiously three times a day, you expect to start to feel profound changes in your spine and things going up your back and over your head, and you, you expect to really feel something significant. It's only after a while you realise the subtlety of it all, and. Mm. Um, it's about picking up on the subtleties. It's half half the thing, isn't it? it, mm. it it's it's suddenly your, your awareness of, of the energy inside your body suddenly comes alive. And, and, and again, difficult to put into words this stuff. It's not necessarily a martial activity, as you rightly say, but it, it doesn't half go hand in hand with what I've learned previously in terms of understanding how the energy works within my body whilst doing Jing Yi, whilst doing Tai Chi, whilst doing Mai Tai, for that matter. Mm. It's a it's a path I'm on at the moment. I'm still travelling down it, and I suppose I always will be. But it's yeah. fascinating. It really is fascinating, and it is it's 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 a real thing. There's no two ways about it, and you can really feel it. That's that's the other thing about Donald and Ray's teaching is that when when I first encountered them in this is back in '93, yeah, I, I was hit by uh, like the, just this thought of oh my god, this is the real thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many Tai Chi classes where people just go and um, they just sort of chill out. Or when you see the martial stuff, then it's really just kind of like wrestling or, or something. You know, the push hands is just shoving around. Yeah, or, yeah, or, that's or, right. And, the, and the, the form work is 
just like a, a thing we all do mindlessly without really understanding why we're doing it, you know. And then, mm. then when you, you, you come across Donald and Ray's stuff, everything fits together. There's a reason why you're doing everything and it's all part of a plan and it's... And, and, then, and then they kind of say they, they, they hit you with something and you're like, well, that didn't feel like a normal strike. What did you do? And, it, it, and it's this internal side that um, is very hidden from, from, from yeah. most, most Tai Chi practitioners as far as I can see. It, it is. And, and it, it's, um, again, we are both extremely fortunate to have met teachers like this who mm. have studied with, you know, studied within a, 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 a section of Tai Chi Chuan that, I've never seen anywhere else, and you rightly say. I mean, you know, I, I've been hit by Ray and and Donald, and, and what what strikes me that is really unusual is not only can they hit like a, a bus has run you over, they can they can hit you with a variety of different energies mm. that um, is again is, is something I've never come across. And to me, it's well, this is one of the reasons why I really want to get into to, to, to the Yang Tai Chi now. Um, and it's going to be a long road to get to that level. I know that for certain. But I mean, for example, I can hit really hard with Jing Yi. I know I can. And yeah, I know, I know. you've, you've hit me before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, mate. But, you know, but mine's quite. It's quite, uh, for want of a better word, the, the way I can I, I can hit hard. It's either on or it's off. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Which, which again is very um, horse, very horse like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and sometimes I don't want to hit you when, when it's on because I don't want to hurt somebody, but you have to still demonstrate a level of power to demonstrate how something works in Jing Yi. This is where I want to change that and have the ability to hit with what I want to prescribe a certain amount of power, just enough mm. uh, to demonstrate something. And that's where people like Donald and Ray and Damon as well, to be honest, they they can do it at will. They can. Yeah, they can I, I don't know about Damon. Da- Damon tends to be a bit on or off as well. <laughs> yeah, Damon's more like a freight train. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bless him. Bless him. He's a lovely guy. He's a lovely guy. But bless him, he, he he's never hit me gently. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just stay hit when you've been hit by Damon. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what 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 Rayo has impressed me with was his ability to to fight at your level and and it's, there was just enough thing. So he he could spark yes. when I first started. He could spar with me and mm. I was thinking well I'm doing okay here you know this isn't yeah. so bad but then he'd you know obviously he'd, he'd be winning but I'd, but you think you have a chance or something at least yeah and yeah. then you see just, and then, then the, time. the next minute he'd go and spar with Donald who could plaster me he could yeah. he could smack me around and he'd do the same thing to Donald where yeah. he, he, he was just beating him you know and, he, and you're thinking he's just adjusting his level to whoever he's with and it's, 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 it's ridiculous the level of skill there. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Because he um, made, and he made Donald look just like I looked when I sparred with him, you know. And I was thinking yeah. that, that this doesn't make yeah. any sense. <laughs> I, I, absolutely right. And I mean, as I say, I've 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 sparred with Donald, and yeah, he's 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 amazing himself. But yeah, Ray comes along and makes him look like um, you know he he's struggling as well. It's uh, yeah. It, again, I, th- I think we're, we're, we're blessed. We are, really are blessed to, to, to be involved with, with such guys who, who are, have taken internal martial arts to a level that I, I, I don't. I don't know where else it exists in the UK. I might be, I might be mistaken, but I, I've not found it around the, the Midlands anyway. That's for certain um, of that level. But, uh, yeah, but I guess part of it is it's it's finding those people that want to fight with Tai Chi. I think I think mm. time has moved on. Because I think they're they were a product of the seventies and the eighties, mm. you know. And I think that the whole world has moved on. The people that want to fight these days aren't doing Tai Chi; they're doing mm. MMA, MMA, aren't they? Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, you know. Yeah. That's where those guys are now. I think there was, right. there was a time before those things was as widespread as they are today, where if you wanted to find that stuff, you found it in Chinese martial arts. But I think history has uh, has moved on. It has. I mean, the whole David Carradine thing, the Kung Fu thing from the 70s and 80s, you're right. It, the smokiness, all of that. Mm. Uh, tai Chi was part of that whole, oh, this is really exciting and different and, and you know, um, and made you feel like you're doing something that's you know, completely uh, mysterious and, and scary and dangerous. But you're right, now it's all MMA. And what really, really does bug me, though, are these videos you see coming on, you know, showing traditional Chinese martial artists against an average MMA guy and getting completely battered. It's just so unrepresenting about what traditional Chinese martial arts can do or what is about. And it, mm. I'm, 
But I, I've got, I, I have a different reaction to those things. I know what you're saying. It, it like mm. what what you want to see is someone actually representing Chinese martial arts well, which yeah. is fair enough because we we know people that can do that, um, I, but. They're not the sort of people that want to appear on a video, unfortunately. <laughs> well, um, exactly. It's a strange. But I, I do, I thing. do appreciate of those videos that there is, there are a lot of, there's a lot of delusion in Chinese martial arts. There's a lot of fakeness and phony things, mm. and it is exposing that. Which I'd, I'd like it when reality intrudes on anyone's little personal castle they've created in their head about how things should really yeah. work. I do like seeing reality yeah. intrude. So I think that, that that's that's been done though. I think it's been done. I think it's been proven. I think you know people have have have, have kicked the ass out of the woo woo in in Chinese traditional martial arts and, and made yeah and made the point. The point's been made. I think now's the time though for somebody to stand up and come from a traditional background, whether that be you know I don't know praying mantis or Xing Yi or, or or whatever, and to stand up and, and, and be counted in terms of being a proper fighter. Because, um, as you say, we know they're there. It's just for some reason, uh, is it the rule set that stops stops that happening? I don't know. But it, it does annoy me to see that no one's really representing what what we both know are, are fundamentally highly effective martial arts. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the solution to that is because I don't think it's happening. I don't think there is a bunch of killer students being trained up by Chinese master somewhere in China that are going to set the world on fire um, it, no it just there's, there's no money in it for one thing I mean there's very little money in MMA anyway and then this is mm. trying to get a, a Chinese martial art only version of MMA is a a subset of a subset isn't it so it is a bit <laughs> and it starts, I know what you're saying it becomes a bit niche and a bit uh I don't know. It's like why? Why if you if you were that person, if you were twenty and had an amazing physique and lots of martial art training, why wouldn't yeah. you do MMA? Because it's the only oh, yeah. one that offers any chance of getting paid for your work, really. No, it's a good point. <laughs> and and even yeah, then, it's, it's it's. I mean, I I know, like a friend of mine was in the UFC. He didn't make any money. Really? <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. It's those. It's only the like the top ten that are really making money, and then. You know, of those, of those people, there's like a hundred who aren't, yeah. who are all getting yeah. paid. They fight once a year and get paid ten grand a fight. I mean, wow, God. Maybe they, maybe they fight twice a year and they get paid twenty grand, but they've still had to pay for their fight camp out of that. So all their training. I didn't training, quite realise the finances were, were were that bad. Oh, they're they're yeah. terrible. They're absolutely terrible. Oh God. Well, so no wonder say, then. Say you fight three times a year. Yes. Yeah. So that's thirty grand. Maybe you get another ten grand for a win bonus or something. I don't know, but you've still got to pay for all your training yourself. God, you'd earn more money being a driving instructor. Yeah, I mean, go and be a plumber or something. <laughs> you, it, it's a, you'll earn more money. Yeah, without the risk of brain damage. Without, uh, yeah, and also, I mean, the other thing, the other part, half of it is, none of those guys are going to have a happy old age. They're all going to no. be affected by what they've done because the amount of headshots you're taking just in your training. Wow, well, exactly, and. and you know, I, I'm of an age where I get easily annoyed, I suppose, Graham, because I'm in my 50s. But, you know... The, oh, me too. What... I'm a grumpy old man now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, really. But you, you, you watch people getting knocked out in MMA and then the, 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 the knocker-outer jumps on the knock, knock, knocked-outed person and gives them numerous hammer fists. Well, you can clearly see they're knocked out. That, that kind yeah. of thing happens all the time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It, that happens all the time, yeah. And I just find that lack of control of the refereeing or of the actual individual themselves. Well, the referees just... normally diving in to stop them, but, the, you know, it's a split second, isn't it? And it only takes a split second to give yeah. two strikes. And I get it. In the, in the heat of the adrenaline and all the rest of it when you're fighting, you, you're not necessarily thinking that clearly, but... I don't know. You don't see that in boxing. I suppose you can't really. Once they're knocked out, they're knocked out. But um, no, it, it just... It, the, a lot the, re of the referees really seem to... Really annoy me. The referees seem to step in a bit earlier in boxing, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause boxing is only brain damage, right? There's there's no strangulation. There's no um, limb breaking. None of that. It, the only thing is brain damage. And so, yeah. so you're repeatedly getting punched in the head. And <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think we've covered a, a, a quite a bit of ground since we've been chatting, but um, ultimately, just the uh, 
the fact that, you know, I'll come back to Jing Yi, let's go full circle. Ultimately, my favorite martial art, probably the least favorite martial art anywhere in the UK anyway. It, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. I suppose the one thing I can say is, well, I've, I've had quite a few students over the last 10, 15 years who I've trained with and mm. and a lot of good guys. And it's, it's hard getting decent, decent students, as anyone knows, in any martial art. But I think even more so in something like Jing Yi, because the it's it's very it's quite minimalist to start off with in terms of what you're learning. And it's also not particularly fun in terms of you do have to get hit now and again just to experience you know certain striking styles and and it lacks the i suppose the belt system and all the other things that that, that other martial arts are, are obviously attractive to people jingyi is very very much on its own in terms of being very i don't know i can't think of the word now uh, i'm trying to think of what the word is for it really yeah you you, you know what i mean though don't you because obviously you've been down the, the jingyi road it, it, it lacks the same obvious progress in terms of where you go from learning how to punch kick mm. footwork you know that that kind of normal approach with a martial art it, but it um, has, tai chi's own... got the same problem though hasn't it there's, there's no there's no sort of belt structure in tai chi either or grading structure unless you can create no one. I mean, but, but you, you can come from tai chi from a health angle can't you you can get you get that mm. straight away the whole form the breathing the butwa jin all of all of that stuff you know it makes sense you can't really do Jingyi for health, although you can when you get good at it, but you know what I mean? It hasn't got the same gateway in terms of understanding where you're going with it. And a lot of people seem to do it as a sort of add-on to another art, another internal yeah. art. Like they do Bagua Jang and they do Shingi as well, but they're yeah. really interested in Bagua Jang or they do Tai Chi and do Shingi, but they're really interested yeah. in Tai Chi. It's like Shingi is always that sort of, we just take a little oh, bit oh. of it, you know. Yeah, and realistically, I mean, the way the way I learned it, I think actually it's the other way, it should be the other way around. If you've got Jing Yi as, as your fundamental uh, foundational practice, Tai Chi, Bagua, all makes sense far, far more easily <laughs> and quicker. Um, let's face it, Jing Yi was the, they say it's the granddaddy, don't they, of, of the big three. Yeah, the, yeah. I mean, it, it's got the oldest writings and a lot of the writings about the other two contain yeah. bits of the writings of Xing Yi. So they're all the same, Graham. They, they, they all pinched it off the Xing Yi, basically, didn't they? Yes, basically. It's all stolen. <laughs> and then it's just a whole bunch of marketing going on ultimately. That's 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 what's that's what's going on. We we, we know this. And, and and you know what the difference is between Tai Chi and Bagua and Xing Yi? Again that they're all ending up in the same place, probably coming from slightly different positions, but there's not a lot of difference between them in in, in many aspects. But I, I'm, um, I'm so confused a bit why why Tai Chi is... I mean, you know, obviously you do Tai Chi for health, but it's so popular, mm. and Shingi is so not popular. It's mm. it's it's a bit odd. Maybe it's because there's no personality who has written a book yeah. about Shingi that has made everyone want to do it, because Tai Chi's had a lot of those. Like Chen Man Ching yeah. was a kind yeah. of... A, you know, he was like the face of Tai Chi in America for ages, wasn't he, in the 60s? and yeah. 70s. Yeah, much so. And then there was people like Taoist poet Al Zhuang, somebody who also became, he was a friend of Alan Watts's and he became like yeah. notable in the Tai Chi world for kind of mixing Taoism and Tai Chi into this kind of blend of Zen like hippiness, you know. Um, yeah, well, and that's, that's the flavour of Tai Chi. It has the Zen hippie, hippiness about it that's very attractive to what I'd call the new age type person in terms of you know it's it, it has all that that going for it jing yi it's fighty it hasn't got any 20 20th century 21st century rock stars like chen Zhao wang or someone like that as you say or and there was no bruce lee uh, for it either because wing chung has bruce lee um exactly continually waving yeah. its flag <laughs> yeah chuck connor's got karate um yeah where, where's the movie star driver? for shing yi <laughs> And even those modern movies like The Grandmaster, which has Bagua Jang featured very heavily, yes, Shingi's a, 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 like a little side part of that. It's it's Wing Chun against Bagua Jang, and yeah, there's you know, she meets a Shingi master, but it's this old wizened guy. No, he meets a and Shingi he, master, and he's not much cop. 
I mean, really? to be honest, he doesn't do much, does he? He just does a couple no. of punches and then goes, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. I think it's so badly represented. It doesn't entice you to want to try it, does it? <laughs> no, no, indeed. Um, I'm trying to think. The Jet Li film, The One, that's the only oh, yeah. film I can think of that's per se got Jing Yi in it, mm. although Jing Yi versus Bagua. Yeah, um, and Bagua looks better in that because it's all flowy and flowery and lovely. Yeah. Looking. and then the Shingi is just done by the evil character as well. And but good... he's quite good at it, to be fair. In, in a wushu style, he, yeah, he does yeah. it quite well. I remember the bit where he, he punches a metal door and leaves. That's right. Trying in to it. Rip, yeah, trying to replicate uh, the Guo Yin Shen story sort of scenario yeah. of being locked in prison and doing half step bung. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's the he's the, the you know if there's a po- a poster boy of Shingi, it's Guo Yin Shen. But, yeah, of course. but I mean, he went to prison for killing someone, so that's not exactly virtuous, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. And we've only got about one faded photograph of the bloke. So yeah, yeah exactly. There's there's no there's no book of his showing his postures or something, is there? No, no. Uh, well, so there you go. So so it, it's not been represented at all in the 20th century, really, by anybody of note, and and hence lacks any profile, really, in, in the martial arts world, full stop, doesn't it? Mm. It always gets a mention, though, whenever whenever you're talking, people are talking about internal things, you know, it always gets a mention because it was the yes. original. Yeah, it shows somebody knows their stuff if they mention Jing Yi, even though they haven't got a clue what it's about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, no, but I, in some ways, I like that. I like saying to people, what, what do you do? I say, I do Jing Yi Chuan. And they go, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah. And these <laughs> are people who've, who've done, you know, been martial artists for 30 odd years and they've never heard of it. And I think, I quite like that. Yeah. I don't know how we, we encourage people to try it because, <laughs> 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 I, I, like, like, I mean, like, you know, before I got into Jiu Jitsu, I was teaching Tai Chi and Shing and everything. And, yeah. Uh, like, very hard to get. I, I get the occasional one bloke who'd he'd drive a long way to come and do shingi with me. Yes. Um, uh, you know, that, and that would go on for like six months, and he'd get to a certain level with it, and then yeah. they, they'd inevitably give up because it was, you know, they'd, they'd have a like their, their wife would have a baby or something. That would be it. They'd be out. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had very similar experiences actually with students. You, you, you're quite right. I think COVID for me knocked it on the head. To be honest with you, I mean, I had I had a, a good class going, and, and mm. obviously the pandemic and, and all that that stuff. And, and I've just not managed to pick it up since for, for whatever reason. But um, as you say, attracting people into what is ultimately um, a very different kind of martial art and trying to get them to appreciate it. it. It is for a certain type of person, isn't it? Yeah. It's me and you, and I don't know what it is about us that <laughs> <laughs> made us that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Indeed. So, so if Indeed. anyone wants to get in touch with you to, you know, maybe try some Shingi, how would they go about it? Um, well, uh, ultimately, probably the best way is there's, a, there's an existing Facebook page called Zan Martial Arts, Z H A N martial arts on Facebook, which uh, mm-hmm. was my old school over in Solihull, where we were doing Tai Chi and Jing Yi. And by all means, anybody wants to ho- get hold of me, message me through through that on Facebook. And uh, I'll ultimately have a look on, I think, is it the Jing Yi Facebook page? I think I've put some messages on there about, you know, if anyone's looking for a training partner in internal martial arts or, or any training partner, full stop for anything, really. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to meet up with people and... and you know, cross reference stuff. Cool. So, yeah, so um, it'd be good to, to hear from anyone who's interested. Excellent. So, that's the thing. If anyone's in the Midlands and fancies a bit Indeed. of Shingi, Tai Chi, or just getting together for some martial exchanges, then Mike's. Or even out. a cup of tea and a chat. A cup of tea and a chat and a biscuit. Yeah, and a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are getting old now, so. Exactly, exactly. So I probably had too many biscuits actually looking at my waistline, but you know, you, you can't beat a biscuit. No. Anyway, great to chat to you, Mike. Yeah, great to catch up with you, Graham. And yeah, it's uh, good to, to uh, see what you're doing on, on the podcast at the moment. Well, you'll be on the podcast. You'll, you'll be what I'm doing on the podcast. So there you go. Fantastic. I'm famous. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> see you then. Bye. Cheers, mate. Take care.